this is going to talk about the different pathogens. Each student will be given two pathogens to do a report on. The report is supposed to be in a PowerPoint form or it is supposed to be done in a visual form where you will post the file. These files will be available so that everybody can see them. They are not going to be commented on, so to speak, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to get you to understand different pathogens and different things about them. Now, with these, everybody's going to be given pathogen names. And what you do is you research the pathogen name, you type it into Google or something like that. You go out and you find information on it. Some of these you can find information at the National Institutes of Health or the Center for Disease Control. You can find things at Wikipedia online. There are a lot of different formats in there. With the pathogen name, you will come up with the name of the disease. And the name of the disease, again, is what is that particular disease called? And again, this is not a long drawn out sort of thing. It's, you know, it's kind of a simple part. Then you're going to come up with the common symptomology. What are the common symptoms on these? None of these pathogen things should go on very long. You know, a couple of minutes should be plenty. There are things that have very complex symptomology in it. Try and break it down to the more common things and what you find with those. Also, you're going to look at the part of the host infected. There are things that we're going to have that are going to be found on the skin. It might be found in the GI tract. It might be found in the reproductive system. It might be found in a lot of different places. So when you look at these, you're going to come back with part of the host that is infected by that. You're going to look at the mode of transmission. How does it go from one individual to the next? And this is kind of an important thing to understand because when it gets transmitted, you know, we, we always want to figure out how it gets transmitted because that's how we go back and we look and see how things work, which will afford us a mechanism by which we can try and control these things. Then you're going to give a description of the pathogen. These descriptions basically are so that we can understand what type of pathogen it is. Is it a virus? If it's a virus, you're going to look at whether or not it's RNA or DNA, you know, how it's put together. If you, it's a bacterium, you're going to give the gram reaction and the morphology. Is it gram negative? Is it gram positive? Is it bacillus? Is it cosi? Something like that. Does it form spores? Are there interesting things about that particular organism that need to be stated? And then if it's anything else, you're going to give a general description. And the general description is going to have a lot of different things. Now, I'm going to give you an example of one. You can see how long this is going to take, and hopefully it won't be very long. We are going to talk about pathogen number 2074.31, which is called Pretzillium detwistum. The pathogen, therefore, is Pretzillium detwistum. A little bit of history. It was originally found in Philadelphia. It occurs on soft pretzels. For those of you who do not come from the Philadelphia area, soft pretzels are very common up there, especially during the wintertime because they tend to be warmed, and a soft pretzel looks like that. When we deal with this, this is called Pretzillium detwistum, or pretzel detwist disease. And what is pretzel detwist disease about? Well, let's look at the symptomology. Symptomology, normally a pretzel looks like this. It's kind of folded and twisted upon itself. There used to be a place over at the Tallahassee Mall, maybe there still is, where they make pretzels. And it's really interesting to watch how they do this. Now, a pretzel that is affected by this particular pathogen, rather than being like that, is going to be kind of untwisted and it's not going to go properly. So that's why it is called Pretzillium detwist disease. Part of the host infected. This pathogen causes straightening of the fibers that are normally formed during pretzel formation. As such, the pretzel is no longer able to twist upon itself, and as it's not allowed to twist upon itself, it becomes very straightened. So it is a very unique part that attaches the what would be the equivalent of the skeletal fibers of the pretzel. Mode of transmission. This has actually been traced back to de-icing salt. When we look at salt, that's normally what we think of as far as a coarse type salt. You can get coarse type salt from many different places. It can be mined. You can get sea salt. And sea salt, when they do that, they normally get sea salt out of a area where they bring in seawater, they let it evaporate, and you get the salt out of it. There is a thing called de-icing salt. 
and de-icing salt is something that is used on roadways. De-icing salt can be sea salt or it can be a rock salt that is harvested out of the ground. But even salt that is pulled out of the ground may have bacteria in there. These would be halophiles that trace their origins back to the time that this was an ocean and the salty water was flowing into a cavern. It got trapped. The water went away and the salt stayed behind. The description of the pathogen. It has been determined to be an archaea type bacterium. The archaea type bacterium is a spore forming one. It has been around for millions and millions of years. Some of these salt formations go back a hundred million years or more. So these bacteria are found in there and they come out and they get into the pretzels and they wreak havoc on it. It is a gram positive type bacterium which means that when stained with gram staining procedure you get a gram positive type reaction out of it. It is an ancient thing that is found in salt deposits. So when they take the salt out, if they use cheap salt for the manufacturing of these things, then all of a sudden we get pretzel detwist disease. That's my report of this pathogen. And that's what we're looking at on this. We want you to go out and we want you to take a look at the different pathogens and give us information about them. Fairly simple assignment. Good luck on it. Let us know if you have any questions.